Hey there! You know me, I always like to start my lives just a little bit early. So we have three minutes, plenty of time to get caught up. If you wanted to invite friends and you forgot to, now would be the perfect time to do so. Share, share, share. Sharing is caring. Except for like really delicious cupcakes. Then I'm okay with not sharing. But we'll just keep that between you and me. I have my trusty... Uh, journal from Society6. This is by Faith Costa. She's an incredible artist, model, body positive activist, mental health awareness advocate. You know her. I've done lots of work with her. So I love my, my journal. I always have it for uh, whenever I'm working on a presentation or a live stream. How's everyone doing this Thursday? I feel like Every time we talk, I'm always like, wait, is it Thursday? But uh, yes, I guess I like to schedule <laughs> things for Thursday. But then also, good gosh, the week just keeps going faster and faster, right? But it's all mindset. So uh, what I try to do is just when I'm feeling that way, I just start to say, well, it's only the fourth month of the year, right? Like, yes, I know time is fly flying by. Five minutes just, just passed to go, right? Time just passes us by. But we also have to recognize where we are when, we, uh, when we're feeling that way because it's not going to help. So kind of taking a, a different type of approach, I think, usually helps. But what else can I talk about before we get started for trying something new? Remember, if you feel like you haven't tried something new in a while, this is the perfect live stream for you to join in and conversate with me about. Uh, if you are struggling with breaking habits and trying something new and kind of getting outside of your comfort zone or aka expanding your comfort zone. This conversation is for you. Who else should join? Anyone who is thinking about how to try something new and wants to kind of figure out what that process is like. This conversation is for you. And if you just want to get to know Tasha, this conversation's for you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Share on your wall. Share with your friends, family. Bring everybody into the loop. Let's get this conversation popping. We have, yes, I believe it's uh, 12 o'clock right now. Yes. Woohoo! It is 12 o'clock. Yes. That means you should be hopefully having lunch or planning to have lunch soon, but then also that you're here to talk with me. Who am I? My name's Natasha Nurse. I'm the owner and co-founder of Dressing Room 8. I'm the lifestyle editor for Plus Model Magazine. I'm a co-host of a podcast called Woken Free. I'm the host of my own radio show on 90.3 WHPC called Our Voices. And there's lots of other titles that come after my name. But why are we here together in this moment? We're here to talk about something very, very important. It's called trying something new. And uh, I always want my live streams to be a conversation. So please, in the comments, you can write your questions that you're having as I talk about things. If you want to give me a like, if you want to give me a heart, I'll take it all. It's Thursday, guys. We need the love. We need we need rejuvenation in our lives. So let's have a really good conversation. Trying something new. Why is this something that I wanted to talk about? Well, first of all, it's played a significant role in my own life. I wouldn't have a business. I wouldn't be married. I wouldn't have tried all these new activities in my life if I just didn't have a willingness to try something new. And just in case you hear my animals in the background, I apologize. My cat is crazy. So... <laughs> Any cat uh, owners out there, any cat moms, give me a like, give me a heart because the animals run me. I, I don't know. Yep, exactly. I don't know who's who's paying mortgage here, me or the cat or the dog. I, I don't know. But uh, we'll, we'll work through the noise, guys. <laughs> okay, so trying something new. We've got to try something new because it expands our comfort zone. A lot of growth and development that we're going to have in our life, is it going to come from when we're comfortable? Nope. It's going to come from when we're uncomfortable. It's going to come from when we are trying something that is completely different or a little bit awkward or a little bit just like totally out of the realm of what you thought you could do. But you're going to learn. You're going to gain an understanding of that experience. And you are going to, uh, you know, 
think about how you can approach your life going forward. So there's great progress and great growth that comes from expanding our comfort zones. And why I think people struggle with trying something new really comes down to three things. First, we're talking about fearlessness, right? Most people do not necessarily say, I'm a fearless person. Uh, if you are, you know, give me a like, give me a heart. I love it. But a lot of people I know and I speak to definitely struggle with fear. They are riddled with it, really. And uh, I'm actually starting a new series called Undress Your Mind with Fear is going to be the, the first one out of the gate. So if you struggle with fear, again, in the comments, tell me, you know, something that you're thinking about that scares you or makes you feel uncomfortable. Happy to talk about it right here, but we definitely will have a whole other series to talk about that. Another thing that is coming up with uh, why people struggle with trying something new is the openness. I think a lot of people are comfortable knowing that they do X, knowing that they behave this way, right? Human beings are what? We're creatures of habit. So when we say, when someone says to you, hey, why don't you try this whole new thing? Your mind kind of is like, wait, what? Like you're just kind of taken back a little bit, right? But that's okay because that's natural. But what we have to do is when we're having these feelings, try to break them out and understand why does X make us feel nervous? Why is this really kind of getting under our skin, right? So there's that. And then knowledge. I think um, the, the unknowing factor of if you're going to try something new, can you predict the outcome? No. Do you know how you're going to feel when you go through it? Nope. Not until you go through it. <laughs> Uh, do you know what, who you're going to meet and what are the outcomes of this whole new uh, experience? Nope. So there's a lot of this unknown and this lack of knowledge, which again, I think is a bit of a shock to the system. So that is an understandable reaction as to why people struggle with doing something new. But is it something that we need to let us hold us back? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So we've got to push past that. Now, fearlessness. We, how, how can we, okay, so we say try something new. Uh, you know, I think there are different categories for how and where and what we should be trying something, how we could be trying something new. First, I would say the strategy as to how to go about this is, you know, what is your purpose, right? I think uh, if you've ever heard me talk before, I really am grounded in the idea that everything we do is both intentional, but we also have to have strategy and purpose with what we're doing. So try something new. What what does that mean, right? There's different categories of our life. I have did a, a real quick list. First, we have our health. There's always something that we can do that affects our health that's new and different than what we're used to. There is mental, mental stability, wellness, right? Are we, are we trying something new to make us feel calmer? Are we trying something new to address aggression or anger or frustration or any other type of, you know, 27, 36 million different emotions <laughs> that can be kind of going through our minds and our hearts in the day, right? Uh, spirituality, right? Whether you're spiritual or not, right? So if you're not spiritual, then maybe trying something different that either purports that, that path that you're on, or if you are and you want to try something, again, that purports that path that you're on, have you tried something new there? What about wealth? Wealth management, finance. It's a really interesting economic time that we're living in with the growth of entrepreneurship, with how the stock market has, you know, historically changed. All sorts of financial uh, changes will continue to happen in our life. It's happened in the past 10 years, 20 years. It's going to continue to change and, and, and mold. And so how are we thinking about how that affects our lives, right? If you've always just saved money in your bank, have you ever thought about saving or investing or doing something different, right? So that's another area we can change something new. Passions. What are we passionate about? Anyone tuning in right now, I'd love to hear. What are things that you care about right now? For me, outside of my business and just my own personal growth, I'm a huge animal lover. So, you know, my life goal is to literally, like, walk next to an elephant and, like, 
you know, maybe have a llama or two in my life. I have some very interesting animal goals. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm trying to achieve. Love to hear if you have some as well. So, you know, that's something I'm passionate about. Also, art. I've always been very artistic and I've always wanting to learn to do a little bit more. Uh, I've never painted. So that's something that I plan to do new that, that this year because it's like, how many years can you go saying, I've never done this. I've always wanted to do this. Like, you know, enough is enough. <laughs> it's 2018, right? I think if you want to try something new, like, painting or, you know, a new type of wine or even trying a new type of food dish, why not? What's stopping you other than you? Exactly. So there's that. Uh, also business. If you're in business, who's an entrepreneur? Give me a like, give me a heart. Uh, if you're an entrepreneur like me, uh, you know, what could you be doing different in your business? That's a something new, right? That could be something new in social media. That could be something new in how you're storytelling, how you're presenting your business. It could be something new in how you go after getting new business. It could be something new in how you handle your clients. It could be something new, dot, dot, dot. You know my phrase I love to say, fill in the blank. <laughs> Over and over and over and over and over again, right? So that could be something new that you do in business. Networking. I do a lot of talks on how to be a creative networker, how to master networking. Have you tried something new with networking? Now you could say, well, what do you mean, Natasha? Well, are you using LinkedIn? Oh my gosh. If you're not using LinkedIn, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I, I don't like, we should have a deep conversation about this because <laughs> there's so much wonderfulness that comes out of LinkedIn. There's a lot of interesting things that have been happening on LinkedIn. Stay tuned for my next live stream about that. You can go to facebook.com backslash DR8 fashion, click on my events for the, the dressing room mate Facebook page. You'll see all my live streams that are scheduled for that. There's a lot of interesting things going on, uh, AKA inappropriate things. I think that I've been seeing in LinkedIn. So that's why I wanted to kind of have a whole conversation about to do's and not to do's on LinkedIn. But Despite the, the, the misfeasance that I see on there, <laughs> I still think it's an incredible platform. It's an incredible platform for knowledge. It's an incredible platform to meet new people, people you would never like even think to connect with. And you see them, they come up and you're like, Hey, I want to be friends with you. And you talk, you, who knows what comes of that, right? So are you networking, doing something different with your networking? Have you even gone to a networking event this year? Who give me a like, give me a heart if you've gone to a, a networking event this year, right? If you haven't, that's something new you can do <laughs> between now and the, you know, the next month. So there's that. Also romance. And I think this is a really interesting and a bit of a touchy subject, right? So I've been married, just celebrated my fifth year wedding anniversary with my hubby and co-host of Woken Free, our podcast. And, uh, you know, we, we've been together for over, it will be 14 years this September. So over 13 years together. And, you know, it, that's a long time to know someone. It's a long time to be with someone. And, you know, you, you gotta make sure that you're keeping things fresh, that you're trying new things. And no, I'm not necessarily all just talking about just the bedroom. Cause I know that that's the natural conversation that people go into when it comes into the relationship conversation, which yes, you've got to keep, keep it spicy everywhere you know, go with that where you want. But how are you keeping it spicy and how you connect with your partner? Are you trying new activities with your partner? The part, the couple that does things together, the couple that likes each other, that that's where you have the long standing relationship. That's how you, how you gather, uh, you know, greater level of respect, greater love, greater connect connection with your partner. So trying something new in the romance department could be really helpful. And, and I spoke from it from a, you know, a coupled up perspective. But again, if you're dating, are you trying new ways to go about the conversation? If you're trying to meet, you know, that next love of your life, what are you doing that you feel could be different, right? How are you responding when you are responding to people who are connect, trying to connect with you? Again, thinking outside of the box, innovation is what's going to broaden the opportunities in your life. It's going to broaden how you perceive your life. And it's also going to broaden the type of life that you have. So, you know, think about that. Let that resonate. If you have questions, again, this is a conversation. I do love to talk. But if you have a question, you want to engage with me, 
come on now, I'm here for you, let's, let's do this. Another area of where you could be trying something new is friendship. Now this is an interesting one because for me, I would say all my life, um, pretty much, you know, I've had friends and stuff like that, but I've, 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 I'm a very independent person, right? And so, you know, I don't think I view friendship in the way that I, other people may view it. I think it's important to have strong relationships of like mentors or people who can coach you and people who can help further you. But the friendship piece, because I'm so independent in nature, I'm not the kind of person who's like, oh my God, I'm having a problem. I'm going to call, you know, my bestie about it. I'm going to talk to my husband about it because, you know, he's my best friend. But outside of that, you know, I, I really, I try to not it, but this is my personal belief. I try not to necessarily go around calling the world about all the bad things happening to me because I think that, you know, words are power, right? And so we, when we speak power into negative situations, then we're just what? We're expanding the lifetime of that situation in our mind. We're having, you know, we're kind of telling the universe that we keep thinking about this. We keep harping on it. We're not moving past it. So I think there are different ways, obviously, how you have to handle, you know, trauma and negative situations and stress and things like that. But I'm, I'm not the person who, you know, wants to go around and have like a cry fest on things. I think that everyone handles stress and trauma trauma differently. So that's my perspective. But there are newer things I'd like to try in friendship as as meaning maybe the types of events that I go to with friends. I would like to maybe try thinking about, uh, you know, how I conduct friendship, like relationships, right? So, you know, I'm a big scheduler. Why? Because I'm a Virgo. I like to ver I like to plan. I like to schedule. I like I like structure. <laughs> I do this fluidity thing works, right? But I like structured fluidity. Now I, I have been challenged in my life, uh, I would say even more now than recently, to have to kind of throw things in there and just like figure it out, which is good. Why? Because there's growth that comes out of that, right? Because I live in the structure world. That's my that that's my box, right? And so when someone something comes and disrupts that box, it's very nerve-wracking tracking, but there have been wonderful um, elements of understanding and growth that have come from that. So I accept it and I welcome it from the universe, right? But um, generally speaking, I try to plan for things because I think it's just a really good way to schedule and handle everything. But I'm, I'm open to thinking about things differently when it comes to friends, friendship, because I find most of the people I, I, who, you know, are I would deem friends or kind of, you know, uh, acquaintances, you know, they want to kind of throw things at you like, hey, girl, it's Friday tomorrow. Let's hang out. And I'm like, oh, you should have told me this three weeks ago. But <laughs> you can't always behave that way, right? You've got to try something new. And maybe that means you have to say, I'm going to breathe first. We always take deep breaths. And then we're going to think about, OK, well, can I really go to that thing tomorrow? Maybe, right? How, how am I, how can I figure things out? How can I switch things up? So there's that. And again, everything that I'm talking to you about and hopefully you'll think about and, and also comment with me about, uh, you know, I have to apply to myself, right? I could never tell someone something that I couldn't tell myself. That doesn't make any sense. You've got to, right? In life, they say you've got to kind of like be your own, be your best client, right? Be your best mentor. So you've got to, you know, whatever advice and commentary people share with you, if they don't think about it for themselves, mm, got to think about that, right? Next area, because I digress. Self-care. Who's big on self-care? I want to like, I want to heart, guys. Self-care is something that uh, trying something new in that department is super important because why most people are struggling with doing good self-care regimens on a daily basis. And then secondly, we've got to innovate in that area. This year, I tried something new. Who's heard of EFT tapping? Give me a like, give me a heart. So I tried tapping with a woman that I love and adore. I've interviewed her. She's a sister on fire, literally, for the Sisters on Fire IRL series that I'm the host of as well. Told you, other titles come after my name. And uh, <laughs> she, um, so she has, she's a practitioner of this. And it's really interesting. I've, I, you can find it, the post I did on Dressing Room A, we did a whole um, Facebook Live and we did live tapping. And, you know, there are different parts of your body that you have to like, tap on and there's a kind of really beautiful wording that you say that was brand spanking new i had never tried that and to be honest ladies and gentlemen it was amazing i burned myself earlier this year it was quite traumatic second and third degree burns again you wouldn't know that why because i told you i don't do that cry game in public <laughs> 
handle your business, right? That That's my approach to life, at least. And so as I was handling that business, you know, it, it was painful. It was very, it was very painful. And so tapping allowed me to learn something new as to how to handle my stress levels, right? You can tap in your car. You can tap when you're on the sofa. You can tap on the train. You can tap anywhere. I mean, literally, I mean, <laughs> it's pretty cool that way. And it just immediately... I just feel like the levels of anxiety and tension go from like a nine if I'm at a crazy high point to like six and then five and you just keep doing it, right? So if you want to know more about that, dressing room, the number eight dot com. And I'll also share um, that the website on um, at the end of this, at the end of this live stream so that people can check it out. But that was something new that that was a that was a self care. That was a wellness. That was a health thing. There's all sorts of like health benefits that come from people who regularly tap and are a, a practitioner or a believer in EFT. So that was something new. It was transformative. So again, I would have never thought to do that. Or, you know, if in the past, maybe I would have seen something like that and been like, mm, is that going to really work again? Instead of the automatic, no, this won't work or no, I'm not going to think about this. How about you just try it, right? How about we just go with it, try it. And then you're like, huh, that was actually pretty awesome. So Tap, 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 guys. Also, fun. Who says they, who thinks they have enough fun in their life every single day? I think I could have even more fun. So I'm going to raise my hand. I'd like a like and a heart from you guys if you feel like you yourself. You know what's the best way to try to have some more fun? Trying something new. Now, will it always work out? No, there's a funny little story, aka not funny, aka very traumatic. <laughs> story of me and my husband going to DR and uh, you know we got this like kind of this package that I won and it was like oh you know with that you can also sign up for these like extra excursions that you can go do and we were in DR and uh, so we were like okay why not let's try something new <laughs> work out for us in the case that, you know, I think that there was definitely a language barrier. But then secondly, uh, you know, I think we were overly ambitious in the type of activity we wanted to do. I think we wanted to sign up for something where literally we're like laying and doing nothing, which isn't, you know, super motivating, right? We should all, you want, you want to move your body, but you know, we ended up doing something that definitely required that we moved our body and, uh, it was quite traumatic, but even though it was difficult and I didn't necessarily love the end of the experience, I'm glad that I did it because I've never done something like that. And so there, and it showed me what I am capable of doing, what I'm able to overcome despite the craziness that was involved there. If you want me to talk more about this, you've got to email me, Natasha at dressing room, the number eight.com. And, uh, uh, if someone asks, I will, uh, I will divulge. I might even loop in the hubby to talk about it, but, uh, <laughs> It was quite traumatic, so I'll leave it at that. But ultimately, you know, even going to a, a different country, how many people have never been to a different country? Like a like, give me a heart, any of that stuff, right? That's trying something new. You, you, It's important to not literally live a life where you haven't experienced meeting someone new, haven't learned, you know, new areas because, you know, say you're a teacher. Doesn't mean you can't learn something about engineering. Doesn't mean you can't learn something about being a podcaster. Doesn't mean you can't learn about TV broadcasting, right? Like, the world, when they say the, that phrase, of like, the world is your oyster. Like, it's not cute and just like, oh, mm, that's fun. You know, like, literally, <laughs> what are you doing to, like, learn something new and just, like, like enjoy, you know, um, enjoy your life and your, like, what's going on? We've got to, we've got to engage in something new. So we talked a lot about what if you're just tuning in, different categories, and I'll rehash categories of where when when people say try something new what are they talking about they're talking about your health they're talking about your mental wellness they're talking about spirituality uh, they're talking about wealth finance business we're talking about passions personal passion projects we're talking about networking we're talking about and just so you see why i'm looking down i got my notebook got to be prepared uh I'm, we're talking about friendship we're talking about romance we're talking about self-care we're talking about fun dot 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 fill in the blank you know me <laughs> so that those are the categories so okay you say all right natasha enough i understand okay try something new so how do we do it first 
I mentioned it before, can't say it enough, purpose. Why are we trying something new? So we want to try something new so we gain new understanding about our lives. We gain understanding about new activities, new ventures, new direction for our life. We also what? We gain an understanding of what we do like, what we don't like, and also new things to do in our lives. So that's the value of doing it. Secondly, the another uh, or another reason or purpose is maybe you need to, right? Maybe this is something that's going to help save your life. Maybe this is a need that will change the direction of your life. Maybe this is uh, something that is going to transform your life. What am I ultimately saying when I keep saying the word life? It is a part of life is trying something new. It's what? Change, right? Which is something that you can put any different color on, you can put any different face on, but we've got to continue to do as much change, transformation, innovation in our lives. Do you understand? Do you want me to say it again? Transformation, innovation, changing our lives. That's the value. That's the significance of trying something new. So, woo! That was a lot, right? It was a lot. <laughs> so there's that. So once we figure out the purpose of why we're doing it, right? And, and again, we talked about several categories of how you can try something new. So once you figure out what are the categories that you want, so we'll do an example. So what did I say earlier? If you were listening, I said, I'm going to try to paint. So I want to, and I'm not trying, my bad. I will be painting, uh, <laughs> I would say I'm going to do this probably in June, June or July. I think those are the two months that I, I want to do something. I, I might do it multiple times. I might do like a, those package deals, actually, sidebar, but <laughs> uh, the, the wine and paint things. I see there's a place popping up here in New York that I'm thinking about, so I'm going to definitely be doing that. You know, it's another thing that I, I want to do that I have not done and it'd be super new for me, the DNA test. So uh, my parents, my family is Jamaican, but uh, there's definitely more in the blood, I think, there. And I want to know where do I ultimately come from in Africa? What other mixes and, and, and all sorts of different concoctions go into the genetic pool that made me? Why keep talking about something and not doing it? So definitely doing that. So understanding, and that's what's going to give me what? Better insight about who I am, which is what? Please roll in the decisions that I make. Please roll in the type of life I live. Transformative, guys. Transformative. So there, those are two things, right? So that's uh, that's like history. So that's like a personal thing. And then also there is the knowledge, uh, the, the, the trying new things where the art, so I'm expanding a personal project, which also what could lead to other things. Then networking, you can never be innovative enough. So I'm always going to put that on a list of things that I can do to, to better connect with people. Business, Listen, you know your girl's about business. So learning more, how can I do that? How can I try something new? I read constantly, trying to understand, following thought leaders, providing insight to me as to how I can be a better entrepreneur, how I can be a better coach, how I can be a better dot, 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 right? So those are some of the things that I'm going to have down on my list as of today so that I can try something new. And I definitely, at the end of this, will talk about, you know, what you're Call, my, my call to action is for you. So stay tuned. We have a couple of minutes to go. So figured out the purpose, right? I figured out, I wrote, wrote down kind of what, what are my something news that I'm going after. After maybe you decide there are three categories of your life. Maybe you're going to do like wellness, like finance. Maybe you're going to do business like me. Maybe you're going to also do like a personal project, right? And those are the areas. Now, again, what's the best way to achieve something? I say it, I'll say it to the end of time deadlines deadlines <laughs> you've got to put a deadline on it guys <laughs> this idea of you know i think i'm gonna do it like five years from now mm -mm. Mm -mm. no what when are you good afternoon camille <laughs> when are you going to try something new i say it like that because that's how we would have to what talk to children that's how we have to talk to ourselves that way sometimes we have to like break things down we make things way too complicated so even earlier when i said i'll do june july bump that we can get even more specific 
I, I don't have my calendar in front of me, but if I did, I would what? I would open up my calendar and I would pick a date. And so I, maybe I would say like June 25th is the first day I'm going to do an, a wine and paint event and I'm going to pick the location and I'm going to pay for it in advance, buy things in advance, guys. And that way you, what? You've given yourself a deadline, you've paid for it, so you've made that financial commitment to it, and now you're ready to go. So all you have to do is literally don't stand in your way, go to your <laughs> scheduled event, have a good time, or even if it's not a good time, learn about the experience, because everything we do is a teachable moment, whether we enjoy it or not. Teachable moments, every single thing we do, everything, every single thing we say, teachable moments because it allows us to figure out if you spend the time reflecting figure out how you can do something better different and keep it moving right that path just keeps going it doesn't stop so that's thank you camille for agreeing uh that's what we have to do so how do we try something new we figure out our purpose then we create a strategy to implore it so i talked about my art paint thing what if you were saying oh i want to actually invest in the stock market Cool. Have you ever read up on it? Do you know what, 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 how does, how does that work? Like who, who do you talk to? Who are thought leaders that are speaking to what you're interested in? What are books, three books you can pick up today from the library, from, you know, Amazon, whatever to understand it. And then at what, again, when do you want to start investing? When is, when are you going to start this new venture for yourself? That's what I'm talking about. Strategy, strict, like, no joking, deadlines, understanding of what you're doing, when you're doing, why you're doing it, and execute. And that's how we that's how we put it into place. And then what do we do? After we've done it, again, depending upon what your something new is, it might be a one-off situation, or maybe it's a series of events, right? Like investing, that's a series of things that you're gonna have to do to get to the point. It's not just, you know, one thing. You gotta get educated, you gotta figure out what what are you interested in investing in who you are you doing it yourself are you working with a group da, 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 right so there's a series of events there um and then once you've gone through that i think it's always important to take the time to reflect because reflection is how we understand if we enjoyed something if we didn't enjoy it, it how we saw the benefit of it whether we didn't see a benefit of it how we could do something different again all those things have to come from a point of reflection if you don't reflect on it then you're not going to know can you you're not going to have a full like mind mapping of what went on there so that's important and then what do i also advise for people to do you know i like to come on facebook and do my live streams right because it's a part of who i am as a business person it's a part of who i am as a coach and uh Okay, you want to, so for example, I've been saying that I want to go to the Pretty Big Movement dance class, but something always comes along and I say next time. Perfect example, Camille, exactly. So that whole something coming along, what does that mean that you're doing? That means that you've been prioritizing someone else or something else over you going to the dance class. If this is something you really want to do, you will what? You will actually do it. So if this, so you'd have to what go on their calendar go on the pretty big movement like website which lists out their schedule when's the next class that you think that you can attend that's currently available in your schedule and you block it out you block that time out for yourself and short of you not being physically alive to attend it you need to attend it <laughs> like it doesn't matter if even if your bestie is like oh my god i need you right now you've the person's got to wait people have got to wait people will make exceptions for things when they want to make exceptions we will rationalize things when we want to rationalize things you know most of my life i'd say oh i you know i, I couldn't go to this or you've got to figure out how <laughs> to cut the bull essentially right cut the bull cut it cut it right now Unless you are not physically able to attend, like you are not living, you need to attend. And if it's something you really want to do, you do it. And why do you need to do this? Because you need to prove to yourself that you can make a commitment to yourself, that you love yourself enough to attend this class. You love yourself enough to prioritize yourself. And that feeling is actually remarkable. That, that, that in and of itself, that, that decision and commitment to that decision is actually even more significant than the dance that we're talking about, right? It's uh, that you need to show it to yourself that you're going to do this and that you're, you're going to stop prioritizing other people and other things over you. You have one life. If you can't get to a dance class, if you can't do one thing that you love for yourself, what are we doing? Why, what are we doing? <laughs> 
right? Like that, that's what I, that, that, that's the first thing that comes to mind. So like even me, like if I, you know, I, I've been working now and stuff like that, but you know, sometimes again, you fall off and you're like, Oh, got to get back on it. I say when I, I start to go down the, Oh, well, I'm too busy. Enough, Natasha. You can't spend an hour dedicating time to moving your body and making you live a longer life and be healthier. Enough, enough, like enough of the madness, like <laughs> cut it out, cut out the nonsense. So, uh, get to it, Camille. I want you to email me at the end of this, Natasha at dressing room eight, the number eight.com. Email me when you've picked a date. And I want you to then also, when you go there, document like what I was saying, See a nice picture on Instagram. Find me on Instagram. Tag me uh, at dressing underscore room underscore the number eight. And I want to see a picture of you in that dance class. And that is so monumental. And that success and that victory is amazing. So Camille, can you agree to doing that? And anyone else listening and tuning in, can you agree to deciding to love yourself enough, to care for yourself enough, to prioritize yourself and actually do what you say you want to do in this life? right? Because otherwise, what are we doing? What are we doing? Awesome. Definitely will. I hold you to that, madam. I, Camille says she definitely will do it. Anyone tuning in, you've got it. All right. You agree? So I hear you. Exactly. So when we're done with this, what, I might, what am I going to do? I'm going to go schedule my art paint night. I'm going to find out if the hubby wants to come with me. And even if he doesn't, I'm going to paint and drink away. Listen, but knowing Khalil, he most likely will want to. He likes wine. So <laughs> not throwing him under the bus. Just saying, just saying, guys, I'm having too much fun, which means it's probably time to eat. So <laughs> let's see. We we're going to wrap this up because, yes, we are over 1230. And, uh, you know, I had a lot of fun. I hope you had. <laughs> Thanks for the hearts. I hope you I hope you understood a trying something new. Yeah, it might be unnerving. Yeah, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. But guess what? You're going to grow from this. You're going to like grow who you are. You're going to feel good that you accomplish that. Again, it's it's not even about the act, guys. It's really about that commitment. Like I'm saying to Camille, it's about that commitment to yourself that you stick with it. And you said, gosh, darn it, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and that that is the power that I want you to hold on to. That is the glory of doing what you say you're going to do and meaning it and achieving it and then thinking about how that went. Because that, though, if you keep doing a series of those events, then those transactions, that is what success is. Success is like my Angelo says, I, and I always kind of uh, fubble up the, the, the quote, but it's, it's kind of, and she says, essentially, it's sex, success is, you know, liking who you are, liking what you do and liking how you feel when you do it. So it's, it's, you've got to really find those moments of success for yourselves. It has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with acquiring things. It's about the life you're living. It's about deciding to prioritize you and actually doing it. That's successful. That's a successful person to me, right? So do it cut the nonsense out, achieve your goals. And uh, tr as you try something new, my call to action is I want to hear about it. I want to see about it. I want to see you do this. I want you to be documenting your experience because we are all content creators. Whether you have a business, whether you're in involved, greatly involved in social media or not, you need to document your experience because it's your timeline that you're leaving for yourself so that you go back and you can review and say, wow, I jumped out of the plane this year. I ate lobster. I did the da, 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 right fill in the blank. So I want you to document, document, document what you're doing, how you felt when you were doing it and share, share with the community so that we can learn. I've never jumped out of a plane. I don't know what that's like, but I do have friends who have and have shared that. And I've, I've felt really privileged to be able to see that information and, and, and make a decision. Currently, no, that's not uh, a benchmark I'm looking to achieve, but <laughs> I won't, I won't completely take it off the, uh, out of the realm of possibility. I'll just leave it like that. You know, I think my dad will kill me, but <laughs> I am, I'm open to it. I know Khalil definitely, my husband is. So, you know, with that, I thank you for joining this live stream. I'm, uh, it's an honor and privilege to have you in this moment with me. I hope you learned. I hope I sparked, uh, uh, you know, a couple of seeds, put some seeds in there. And I want to hear from you. How can you best get in touch with me? First, the website, dressingroom8.com. Email natasha at dressingroom8.com. 
social media. When you go to the website, all the social media handles are there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go enjoy the rest of your lunch. Go on facebook.com backslash DR8 fashion to see all my other upcoming live stream events. Like I said, I'm really excited about the Undress Your Mind series because why? We spend a lot of time on the outside, right? We gotta look, uh, we gotta look fabulous, right? We gotta, because, you know, our presentation is a part of how we remain confident. It's a part of how people interpret us. So I'm all about fashion and presentation is a part of being your most successful self. But we've also got to do what? Thank you. We've got to work on the inside, guys. So we've got to undress our mind of fear, of self-doubt, of negativity, of guilt. Those are the force, the first four uh, subjects that I'm covering in the Undress Your Mind series. So again, I want to hear from you if these are things, if there are other things that you're like, oh, Tasha, can you talk about? Yes, baby. Let's talk about it. <laughs> let's talk about it. But I got to hear from you. So you got to go to the website. You got to hit me up. You got to email me. And uh, again, thank you for your time. It's an honor. Go enjoy your lunch. And uh, yes, exactly. We all have to focus on our inside. We've got to stay in our lane and figure out how are we how are we dealing with this? How are we making this better? Because one life, one mind, we control what's happening, we control what we're doing, and we've got to make the most out of it every single day. Live with purpose every single day, guys. So kisses. It's been real. We'll talk to you soon.